Hey, my name's Scott Davis. I live in Bel Air, Maryland. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to tell you about the latest collector that my son Brad and I built just two weeks ago. This is a CPVC collector that we put in our eight foot by eight foot test frame. It's immediately adjacent to our PEX collector, which we built a couple years ago, which is in a 24 foot by eight foot frame. Now what's nice is I can compare the temperature rise of both collectors and I do that by sending fluid to this CPVC collector first, then it goes to the PEX collector and I can measure the side-by-side -side real time comparison with the exact same amount of fluid so I know I've got a pretty good comparison between the two collectors. And what's neat is this CPVC collector is giving about a 15 degree Fahrenheit temperature rise while the PEX collector is giving a 30 degree temperature rise. But the PEX collector is three times as big. So that means if I had the CPVC design in the PEX space, I would have a 45 degree rise in that space instead of 30. So point being, this, this thing's working. And another neat advantage of this CPVC design is that I was able to do a parallel flow. I have multiple parallel risers going from headers and that enables the flow to be very low resistance. The uh, PEX design has a serpentine pattern. All the water goes through a single loop at a time. So it's a lot more resistant. It lowers the flow, it lowers your, that slows down the efficiency. So I'm really happy with, with this CPVC design. It's very inexpensive. CPVC is cheap. It's all half inch CPVC. Um, and I spaced the risers three inches apart. Some of the commercial collectors and homebrew collectors that use copper, copper is expensive. So folks generally don't space it much closer than six inches. By doing it, three inches, I've got a much higher wetted surface area, the risers are much closer together, so the heat that strikes the aluminum between the risers only has to travel a maximum of an inch and a half, as opposed to three inches with the copper. So, bottom line is the thing is working great, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I guess the one thing I should caution anybody who's considering a CPVC design CPVC is rated to 180 degrees Fahrenheit at 100 PSI. Now, our solar systems have very low pressure, they're just a few PSI, so we should be good into 200 F, but if you were ever in a situation where the fluid were to stop flowing, that could conceivably get over 200 degrees Fahrenheit and you could have a puddle of CPVC. Um, there are things you can do to mitigate that concern. Some of the things that you can do are to build at a real high tilt angle, which is better anyway for the low tracking winter sun. You want it highly efficient in the winter. In the summer it's not so efficient, but you don't need all the heat because you're only doing hot water. You're not heating your home with that. And because the sun's striking it from way up there instead of flat on, it's not going to get cranked up to those high temperatures even though it's hotter outside. Um, I also built this with, this, it's not sealed overly tightly, a little air infiltration, it may hurt the performance a little, but it also gives me uh, some confidence that I'm not ever going to exceed that 200 degree Fahrenheit uh, borderline. Now anyway, this is the collector. I would like to take a minute now and show you how Brad and I put this together. If you've never done a solar project before, this is a great introductory project to start with. It's super easy, anyone can do it, and it works well. I built an 8 foot by 8 foot collector, 64 square feet, so I wanted the risers spaced just 3 inches apart. I wound up with 32 CPVC risers. I have 64 T's. Now the T's are inexpensive. They're only 19 cents each. This is all half-inch CPVC. The connectors 
and then the flow guard gold glue that glues everything together. Here Brad is holding one of the headers that we've started gluing together. It's just underway, about halfway. Um, I should add that Brad is also our chief recorder for all these videos. Uh, now we have both headers complete and they each one uh, just under eight feet wide and we're ready to start attaching the risers. Here's the frame that the completed assembly will go in. It's backed with poly iso insulation. Um, always use poly iso in a collector because that can withstand the high temperatures that we experience with our solar collectors. Other types of insulation will actually melt. And here we have the risers all glued in place. One of the most tedious and time consuming parts of the PEX collector was bending all the flashing with the grooves to go around the PEX. Now the PEX is about six inches apart, much like the conventional copper collectors, and I decided I might sacrifice a little performance doing this, but I wasn't going to bend all those this time. Instead, uh, since these are only three inches apart, meaning there's only an inch and a half of uh, distance that the heat has to travel, I decided I'm not going to bend these guys. I'm just going to lay out silicon caulk on each piece of CPVC and then just lay the aluminum flashing right on the caulk. Now we have all the pieces of flashing laid on the CPVC and a couple of those piece of flashing actually had been used in a prior project that's why they have uh, a little bit of discoloration and here we have the unpainted absorber set in the collector and a couple of the pieces of flashing are actually golden in color but it's all uh, similar thickness uh, off-the-shelf flashing that you find at Lowe's or Home Depot and here you can see a front view and here is a side view this collector went together super easy with no problems at all. In the final video clip where you see me talking, you're going to see what appears to be a wet portion of the collector. That's actually a different paint. Uh, I spray painted this uh, with uh, flat black uh, spray paint, which uh, was easy and quick to do. But uh, apparently one of the cans was not flat black, it uh, was a, a glossy, so that, that's why that looks wet. But I had zero problems with leaks. Uh, this collector is outperforming the PEX collector, and it's just so darn easy. I, I really highly recommend it, especially if you've never taken on a project before. You'll get uh, great results, it's a great family project, a lot of fun, and I highly encourage uh, getting started with it. Thanks so much for watching our segment on the CPVC collector. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have questions or you want to learn more about solar, I invite you to join us on our email group, Simply Solar. There's a lot of folks who actually have a lot more experience with DIY and solar than I do on the group, and we're all eager to help and would love to have you with, as part of our group. So again, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.